Call the regular board meeting of the National Public Library District Board of Trustees to order. It is 7.01 p.m. on Wednesday, March 16th, 2016. Please take the roll. Karen? Here. Uh, Carolyn? Here. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Tim? Here.
So um, I don't know when Dennis contacted Susan, um, but I would think it sounds like I don't. It sounds like we can't handle this, and I don't think that's an appropriate way to word this. I mean, we weren't all called, and you don't know that I think you don't need to call all of us. If you have four members who agree to uh, this payment, then it, then you can just move on it. But what I'm trying to say is, rather than say there wasn't enough time, because I mean, even four phone calls, this is on the table. I need your response, yes or no. It just doesn't look good. Is where I'm coming from. Well, I guess my question would be then, is that something we need to put into a policy? Or it already is. That is. Something? is it? All expenses are approved at a board meeting by all of the board members. Is there no provision for an emergency, emergency situation? situation? You get phone calls at home. That's what we've always got. And, and remember I brought it up and you guys said, well, Martin didn't call us. And I know we always followed the letter of the law. So the reason had to be, once you got four, you stopped. So that would be the same thing here. Once you get four, you can stop, but you're still following the procedure. So I guess I'll just bring this to Dennis. So um, Dennis, what would you suggest in the future if we have some, like a, an emergency like this? Well, it depends on the nature of the emergency, of course. But in this case, um, if we have enough time, I think it makes sense to reach out to each one of the board members to get to get a consensus as to mm -hmm. what their opinion is. You can ratify the action, I agree. You can ratify the action at board meeting, but in order, in this particular case, we need an answer right away. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the feeling of the board and then have the board take the final action at the, at the board meeting. So but if there's enough, if there's an, it seems to me that if there's enough time to contact each board member, each board member should be made aware of whatever the issue is and have an opportunity to voice their okay, so, thoughts on it. All right, so at least um, try to contact all board members, even if, it, even, maybe even if you can get four and let everyone know about it, or at least put down a time when you try to call and document it. Yeah, it, something it, like it that. depends on what the time pressure is, of course. Right. If you need an answer in an hour, very rare. Right. But if you do, and you can't get a hold of somebody, this was stuff, pretty, you do, at least you can try to reach out. Well, yeah, it, was it was pretty, yeah, it, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty late, late. But, but no, that, that's a good, good point. Right. Your point is well taken. Yeah, yeah. I think well, and what's happened before is Diane would call us, and she'd get my voicemail and say, I need a response, you gotta call mm -hmm. back by a certain time, or she was gone by then, and it was, no, but it could have been you, or I'm saying, so. And, and you have our sound numbers. I'm just saying, you know, we put things in writing and we're not following the procedures. Yeah, I think and, that, and that's a good thing. I mean, it doesn't from, the, from now on, I would say just for, I mean, whatever reason is just for good faith just to. Well, because you know, sure we don't actually, do. approval of expenses has to be done by the board. By, you know, by a board. So and, you, exactly and you get the board. It's, it's, it it's sure is. is. It's, was, how much was that one? 14 grand. Well, this was a. Tax. It's well, still like a, we still have to pay. You have to decide to pay it or not pay. It's still money coming out of our revenues. Right. There's no way around it. Right. Actually, right. We're here only because we're supposed right. to be in control right. of spending. Right. So. Okay. I think that's. And if you put that in the minutes, well, it's actually like, that it's a process. Like, you know, I think tonight's minutes. Yes, right. But these minutes do reflect what was said that right. day. Right. Exactly. So I think you know we can go forward with. It. Approving these minutes because I think that would reflect that that is what Susan said right. in the last meeting. Right. Tonight's minutes can reflect okay. further discussion. That makes sense. Sure. It okay. does. That sounds good. Like, sounds good. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're in the middle of taking a roll call. Yes. So I'll start over. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Public comment. Are there any public comments tonight? No? Uh, okay, so for the month of February and uh, the eight months uh, that ended, uh, revenue for the month was more than budget expectations by $167,000 and year-to-date expectations by 141000 or 3.8%. 
uh, but we expect things to even up by the end of the year. Uh, we started collecting the first installment on the uh, 2015 uh, tax loan. Uh, salaries for the month are 97.90 below budget estimates or 3.7 percent, and under budget 115,000 or 5.4 a year. Uh, library materials for the month. Uh, 8,400 under budget for 13.7 percent, 35,000 under budget or 15.2 percent for the year. Uh, library operating expenses, 6,100 over budget or 21 percent for the month, 36,766 under budget or 15.7 percent to, uh, uh, to date. Um, this is primarily due to a spike in the programming expenditures in the month and slower than anticipated spending in the software and printing lines year to date. General administrative expenses, $7,400 under budget at 27.7% and $55,000 or 25.8% year to date. It's primarily uh, due to slow spending on the consultant line. Employee fringe benefits, just like salaries, are uh, under budget, uh, $80,367 or 6% for the month and $27,368 for 6% year to date. Uh, utilities, approximately 2,000 under budget for the month and $5,300 year to date. Uh, the net surplus or deficit for the month, the net surplus is 427,580, which is $218,000 favorable to the budgeted net surplus of 209,000 and 698,238 favorable or 110% better than uh, budget year to date. Any questions? Just yeah. one. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was curious, is the fact that the utilities are under budget you think because of weather? So what happens generally is uh, during um, during the warmer months, uh, we, we see a spike in the utilities. And uh, we see uh, uh, also, uh, heavy usage, but not as high as the summer during the winter months. And the transitional months, we see lower than uh, average expenditure. So, so it evens out? Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, it, it evens out. We should end up uh, at approximately the budget line, depending on what happens in the next few months. Okay. Just curious. I just had a question. Can you elaborate on what programming expenditures um, were involved in this fight? So, uh, to bring the uh, candy exhibit in, uh, we had a lot of expenses uh, surrounding that to, you know, to uh, set that up and get that going. So that was uh, primarily. Okay, I'm thinking programming computers. Okay. Oh, okay. It's programs. Got it. Yeah, we don't program computers. No, no. <laughs> so it's just all these new computers. Yeah, and, okay. Thank you. We buy programs. And, and if I could just then project, I think we should expect to this program, not programming. But the program expenditures to be uneven because typically we spend a great deal of money from this point forward getting ready for summer reading. So they'll have held a lot of money back so that they can buy summer reading prizes and things like that. So it will, okay. it will continue to be up for the rest of the year. Any other discussion? Any other questions? Okay. Let's say on the agenda is director's report. Oh, Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of the bills. So for oh, I'm not done yet. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, whoops! I forgot the game to be for operating expenses of two hundred thirteen thousand ninety eight dollars and nine cents. Payroll expenses of two hundred seventy two thousand five hundred twenty nine dollars and forty seven cents. Special reserve expenses of zero dollars for a total monthly expense of four hundred eighty-five thousand six hundred twenty-seven dollars and fifty-six cents. So moved. Second. Karen, Karen. Whatever. <laughs> Cindy, please take a roll. Um, Karen. Uh, yes. Carolyn. Yes. Patty. Yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is the director's report. Susan. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you again for coming to the candy exhibit party. Um, as you can see, 
is off to a great start. I checked right before the meeting, and there were so far 484 people have come through that they have managed to catch by counting at the desk. And they're, you know, they're not looking every second, but they're trying to kind of manually keep track that way. So we're happy with that. It's just been a couple weeks, so that's a nice count for for that. Yeah, you see people every I come through that door all the time, and I'm always seeing that thing. That's so coming I mean, the way I used to because I kind of tend to hold some people. The now. librarian over at the app desk is yeah, keeping it. Oh, yeah, nice. kind of eyeballing it. So okay. yeah, we don't have a physical counter over there. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But you yeah. all the <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of games. We don't well, see well, the I don't see little bowls. That caramel corn was. <laughs> um, let's see. So I think that's going really well. Again, I appreciate all the work that marketing did getting that ready to go. Uh, that's that's really, I think, you know, and I didn't work. understand what it was going to be, you know, until I saw it. Yeah. It was really very impressive. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. And it was fun. Good. Except this guy was a little creepy. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like him. You didn't like Mr. Happy Jack? I like him. He's taller. Yeah. Yeah. So we never liked the guy. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, as far as the strategic plan goes so far, I got a quote from, uh, as I mentioned in my report, the person <coughs> that did Lincoln Woods assessment because they were very, very happy with the community survey piece that she did for them, and that's, to, I believe, what we particularly want somebody to help us with. So I got that, but then I thought it really would be better to get some more proposals too. So I have uh, queries in with the three other people at the moment. So I'll come back to you next month with a recommendation for who to go with. Um, we did go ahead and buy the van. Great. Uh, Dan, Dave went out and got that taken care of. It's now sitting in the garage, um, so keeping nice and clean and perfect before it gets shrink wrapped. Um, it's, it's plain white, but it's going to be covered in the libraries. Yeah, that's the wrapping that we're going to see. And so we actually had a meeting about that today with Greg and marketing, and I think it's going to be, it's looking like a great Is it done here, or do you have to take it somewhere? Well, because it's okay to take it. Um, you may have noticed as you came by Kids Space that they are working on the lighting in there. Uh, the, the so, I know, I remember. You, you know, it'd be kind of neat if uh, Sasha or whoever took it took some pictures as they were doing this. The addition uh, happened? Yeah, yeah that would be good. Good idea. Do they do that in your dryers? I think so. <laughs> Industrial. Oh, oh yeah, right. probably you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a breach by Chloe. <laughs> yes. Um, that you may have seen as you came by that they were working on the, improving the lighting in kids' space. You have the beautiful bubble lights, yeah. we call them, but they just don't shed quite enough right. light down on their status, so they are tweaking that. Um, Danette had asked about the bus traffic, the flow of bus traffic last mm -hmm. week, and so um, Dave and I looked at it, and it, he, he was dubious that we could make a change, but he called the head of the um, Nile Street bus and asked them about it, Pace Bus, and they, it, the guy just basically said, oh, don't worry about it, it's just one particular driver. So he does not see it as a problem. It, it seemed, observing the traffic pattern, like it would be really hard to get people to go, you know, because people are backing out and they just, they're going through the driveway. So it just does take a while to get out of our parking lot, is I think the bottom line. And we did not easily spot a way to improve that. Keep an eye on it. Um, I talked last time a little bit about potentially making an intergovernmental agreement with our schools so that um, our teacher cards would fall under that and potentially uh, some of the children in the unserved areas. Um, and so I talked to, I had a person come out from Rails to explain that to us. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Veranda. She did a great job. She just, my concern about it was that we would have to pay the school or that the school would have to pay us enough to cover those library cards. But what she said is that it can be payment in kind. And Greg made, I think, a great suggestion, which was the payment in kind could be that they would be marketing for us. So it would be an outlay of costs for them that they would not have budgeted and they would not be able to do, but that they would be marketing some of our things up there. So I thought that that was a great possibility. Mm -hmm. You mean the schools would be marketing? The schools. So yeah. as, getting our, as the reading programs and stuff like that, yeah. the books, that's right. cool. You're right. That's yeah. cool. You know, whatever they're doing, you know, their newsletter and things like that, if they were promoting the, the things at the library. Cool. So I, that seemed like a good potential way to do it. Do you know how many students are talking about? I don't, yeah. I mean, I, in terms of the students I am working with, this, with, it's only District 63, it's Washington School in particular that has a pocket of unincorporated Glenview beside it. 
Um, so they, we are working with them to find out exactly how many students we're talking about. So at the moment, I'm really mostly just talking about the teacher cards that we currently offer but are not offering um, according to the way that the state thinks is appropriate. What's so, the difference? Well, right now we were just giving them library cards under their own name and, um, and the state doesn't want any library giving anybody a library card that, that is not a taxpaying person in that district. And, and that's a change. So, you know, we have some 400 cards and we deliver a lot of materials to the kids. That's how a lot of our materials get in the hands of the kids, mm -hmm. is by that program. So we really want to preserve it, but we want to do it legally. So this intergovernmental agreement would be us agreeing to give library cards to the teachers, as we currently do, or their employees, basically, and them agreeing to do something for us, and Greg Spencer had been doing some marketing and advertising for us on an ongoing basis. So it's just one card to a teacher? Per teacher, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's the whole other question of if we would want to also try to give cards, cards in the hands of the kids that don't have the ability to get library cards, but I see that. I, I don't want to bring that to you mm -hmm. until I have a phone number. And it's considered intergovernmental now because you're following a process, a legal our, process. Our board, you, would be making an agreement with their board. Okay. Two governments agree. Okay. Yeah, that's something. Okay. <coughs> I think so. it's interesting because, like I said, what I know from the displays, they actually have to, the school actually had to pay for the kids to get the cards, mm -hmm. or the parents have to pay the whatever hundreds of dollars that is to get the cards. So I think that's very interesting, and I think it, it shows us well that we're willing to work a deal like that with them because not everybody in the area can afford to spend that much for a library card. Right, although I think that right now we're still at the finding out how many kids we're talking about stage. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you say the state prohibits us from giving <coughs> cards? Yeah, you're only supposed to give library cards to your own taxpayers. It's okay. very, I can see why we wouldn't want to do that because it's fiscal and maybe not right. idea, but what is what is the state care? It's it's just how they have set up the the program. I know you think she represents the school that's in the tax. Yeah. 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 Or enforce them, I guess, is the yeah. term. Can I just ask one mm -hmm. other question? What schools are involved? Well, these would be the schools of District 63. Mm -hmm. That's Washington, Washington. Nelson, Twain. Apollo, Twain, Gemini, Gemini, Melzer. Only District 63? Uh, no, it's just the first oh. group. And then oh. uh, the teachers over at Culver. And well, really, we have teacher cards at a number of different places. So oh. I don't know how it would work with St. John Brabuff. I have not talked with them yet about how what kind of a board we could be making an agreement with with the school yeah, of St. John Brabuff. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so it would have to be something. But isn't their board considered their governmental? Well, it would be an intergovernmental agreement in terms of it's not two so government bodies. Um, I don't know, maybe there's some other way to do it, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it may get a little bit more complicated with some of the daycares and things like that. Okay. So, all right. I'm done. But at least, I, you know, now we have at least the, the official word from the state of you know, okay. what we need to do with the biggest number of cards. So, I will keep working on this and bring you more information as I have it. Okay. So, daycares are being included? Daycares are interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we have a lot of teacher cards out that they can use. They deliver... Um, our, our bags, materials. I was going to say daycare. How young do you give them cards? You're talking teachers. The teachers. 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 And he got them to do a study of whether we could get reduced costs to them, but unfortunately, as the last time he looked, there was not a significant savings. So it's again another thing to look at, you know, periodically, but for now this does not look like a good a good change to make. Thanks, correct. Um, let's see. CTS has um, been trying for a little while now to set up their system so that materials are automatically renewed when they come due if somebody hasn't ret returned them so that they don't get a fine. That would be nice. 
it would be a wonderful thing, and but it wasn't working. Yes. But oh. somebody said today that she that it seems to finally be working. So cross your fingers. So I'm supporting the library with all these little thirty cents. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. So yeah, so I thought that was good news. And then um, the the board had, if you'll recall, you had um, agreed to my request to a lot another seventy five thousand dollars for personnel and digital services but that you wanted to be notified if I was considering doing that. Susie has persuaded me, uh, now that she has had several months of working with the schedule, that she does need some more staff. Um, and I see it myself because I see the emails going back and forth. Right now they are using, I think it was 23 hours a week of adult services staff um, to help cover that desk. And because it is one of the busiest desks in the library. And whenever an adult services person called in sick, then their person was getting yanked. So, it was just not good coverage all around. So um, what we would like to do is we have a part-time person working down there now, Bernadetta, who you have seen lots of compliments about. She is um, somebody that we get a great deal of positive feedback about. Um, they would like to put her full-time, which will make her schedule more flexible, and cover the hours of the day that they need to be covered. And then they would also like to hire a um, 10 to 15 hour a week person. That is not the whole $75,000. You'd ask to be notified when I was contemplating doing that. So this is me notifying you. So two full-time people. Well, no, this no. is one. The, one. the other one is just 10 to 15 hours. So one part-time, one full-time. So well, the person already is. Um, the person that's we're moving to full-time is, part 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 is, is currently part-time. She's already working about 26 hours. So it's essentially a full-time person. Correct. We can spend. A, a total of $70,000. No, that won't, be the whole, that won't be the whole seventy five. You have Susie's salary and this full-time person at less than $75,000 a year. No, the, Susie's salary was never part of the $75,000. 75. That I was the reason for that salary was part of the supervisor. No, we weren't sure it was, what the purpose would have been. It was specifically for grade 6 employees to help cover that desk. And that's what, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, that wasn't my understanding. Is, I can, I it, was, it was a specific motion. Well, I'm great. I'll, I'll have to review if I'm not saying that I didn't misunderstand. So it's that busy down there now. We're thinking of hiring that many full time staff. Is that no, area pretty no, much no, closed? She's making one part time person to make her full time. Okay, and, and then she's hiring a part time person. Instead of pulling from another part, the adult services. Because right. that makes it a little rough. I think what I don't understand is that the library, all the sections of the library, all the time are so busy that people can't job share. Well, they, they do, though. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I think complicated, like there's an issue, it doesn't work. And well, I find that hard, like there's never somewhere you could pull someone from? No, there often is, but, and, but that's what we do all the time. Uh -huh. And yet, we still get to a point now where we occasionally have to close a desk because we just don't have enough staff to cover. And or, or people end up working these crazy split shifts where they you know work in the morning and then they have to come back at night and that's not a good ongoing kind of situation. You can anybody can do that every once in a while, but that's a horrible kind of job schedule. Oh, I thought those so, are all the part timers. So we only have 44 full time employees, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we need to okay. And then what about all our problems? I guess they don't understand the scope of all these employees and how they fit in. We have part-timers, we have many volunteers. But they don't serve on library desks. They do many of our other tasks. They are very, very useful to us. For example, they clean all of those computers down there, but they're not, they're not at the desk helping the patrons. That would involve a whole different level of training. And this, this person is a librarian? A Bernadetta? This, this person that's going from Part-time part to full-time. Bernadetta actually is a librarian of Poland. She does not have her MLS, ALA accredited MLS in this country, so she is a paraprofessional. But is that the requirement for this position for that desk? I'm trying to figure out. Yes, there's nobody, there's nobody under that level at that desk. Yeah. Okay. It's not a big, we don't have clerical positions. I think the confusion also comes in where we've never really been really aware of this department handles this, this is what happens, these are the positions, so it's really unclear. Okay. So, and I can understand you need these qualifications to work here, and somebody from this department isn't qualified to be pulled into this area. So that makes sense. I just don't have a real clear yeah. understanding of that. That's why I keep asking questions. Sure. 
Well, you might be encouraged to know that one thing that I do want to do in the next few weeks is survey all of the library staff and um, all of the paraprofessionals and the librarians and find out which desks they would be interested in working at and how much training they feel like they would need to. Many people are cross-trained. We, for example, have a, a cataloger that sits on the youth services desk periodically, things like that. And, and I'm a big believer in cross-training. I like people to be able to multitask. Mm -hmm. With the commons desk, down in the commons is a, is a shared desk, and we have many people doing that desk, and we kind of plug in as we can. So I'm a big believer in cross-training. We do a lot of it now but we just can't cover all of those hours still. Sure. It, it is a very busy desk. If you've been down there much, you know that it's a lot of the day it's it's humming. It's true. And, and, and a lot of the people need a fair amount of help. Yeah. It's not a quick question. Often it's, it's a little bit harder. And it Bernadette is, is fabulous at that. It's just fantastic. So I just wanted to let you know that. And that's all I have. Can I just ask a quick question about this uh, um, auto renewal? Yeah. Sure. So back to that. How does that work? I mean, does it keep renewing indefinitely? Or I, I Up to our limit for renewals, okay. which I think is four. So it wouldn't do it forever. Okay. But it just gives you time, you know, it notifies you your thing just got renewed, uh -huh. and then you, you realize that, oh, you've already had it for three weeks, you need to, you need to finish it. And not everything is renewable. If somebody else is waiting with a hold on it, okay. it will not be renewed. All right, I guess, I guess I see some of you just getting things to show. the shelf, so other people who just walk around and look for things will find them too. So. And there's always that tension between having browsable collections or having things out with people. Mm -hmm. But that was actually a uh, decision made by the governing board as a group. That was all of the libraries had to opt into that. I remember when I was uh, sitting in at some of the board meetings before I was elected Morgan, they had that very same. Yes. Desire. Oh, yeah. Did Morgan wanted it. Oh, he wanted it. Oh, yeah. Well, he, yeah, because you know, sometimes he would be using the book over a long period of time, and if nobody else wanted it, he didn't see any reason why it should just go back to But I mean, that, I remember talking about the, that little fine. Yes. And if it, if it could be renewed anyway, why yeah. the heck are you being fine? Yes. Yeah, so I think, yes, I think there are many patrons like Morgan that will really appreciate the service. So Great. we're just glad that it's actually working now. I just have one question. I sure. can't find it in, in the notes, but you mentioned that you were contacting consultants, possibly yes. Lincolnwood. I just want to make sure I'm clear on the purpose. I thought we were looking for a consultant specifically to do a survey. Correct. Okay, not for the entire strategic planning, because we were going to go with Barbara's suggestion if we already spent that money and follow the procedure. Well, the, um, I think. I think you're actually probably when you start talking to the consultants, you're going to find that the procedures that we used five years ago are a little out of date because the service, the service um, responses that he had people voting on are kind of out of date. Um, so, but but the reason that I picked this particular person to talk to is that this is for strength is doing the surveying piece of it, and that is by far the biggest part of the quote. So that's what I'm telling each one of the people I'm contacting is we want help with this piece of this process. I would be very surprised if any consultant worth their salt doesn't come back with a full package. They're all going to want to get as much as they can. So, so they will what, all. what costs are we looking at now? This this went from no. I think, well, just correct me if I'm wrong. The <coughs> survey was also to help us understand who, in fact, are in these non-Nile areas. But are you you suggesting the survey will be even more extensive? Are we looking? What are we looking? What the idea is to survey up statistically significant proportion of our patrons to find out what they want out of the library, what they're currently using and what they want out of the library. So this isn't the person who's going to go out to these outlying areas where we have no knowledge. Yeah, no, that, that is what they're going to be doing. Okay, uh, she was talking about, when it, this particular person was talking about a combination of phone surveys, having uh, people at places where a lot of people go, like say Ralph Mill, for example, and hand out surveys there. Um, and that she was going to follow up and do longer telephone surveys. I think, you know, she was working with a person that was a surveying expert. So it would be basically what he recommended for, but she, looking at our map, she could see that it was going to be a little bit of a challenge. And so that's why we're hiring her. Right. But I'm hoping, if it's not a sampling of the population, 
she's really going to delve into that, those areas that we are we find questionable, correct? Yeah, I think that is the idea. But but not only them, but you, you need to talk to all of your taxpayers. Oh, no, I understand, but we can go to golf. No, we need something to get out into those pockets. Right. Because those people seem to be hidden. So, okay. well, I guess we'll figure out yeah. what she's doing by well, what and she's doing. It, actually, she's, I mean, with the numbers of, did we have on the last, Minutes, how many people there were, or how many card holders yeah. cards we had? Which really, they're not hidden. We have a lot of people. It's, it's like it's pretty even. Yes. Yes. So yeah, and no one consider that hidden. Oh, so those are card holders. Those are not card holders. Numbers. People. Oh, right. Okay. Those are card. It was pretty even. Them? Okay. Yeah, it, it was, was pretty close. even. Yeah. It was. Yeah. No, you're right. right which right. actually was kind of surprising. Okay. All right. Well, my eyes are a little. Bit. Yeah. You mean incorporated and unincorporated? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any, any other questions or Susan? Okay. Um, are there any communications, Susan? Uh, I just got an awful lot of comments this month that were mostly very positive, so it's nice to see because they're not always. Mm -hmm. So just be sure to just I think it's important. I think that people when they are making those comments think they are communicating with you, so it is important that you get a chance to see them. And then just a really nice email that I got from somebody that works at the Downing Grove Library. That's usually the first thing I look at when I get the minutes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm curious what people are feeling. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, the next item. Okay, the buildings and ground in the park's not here. So. I can't just say about oh, yeah. that. But, um, that yeah. Oh, yeah. That, um, we have the, at the Buildings and Grounds Committee, we had talked about improving our exterior signage. Barbara has been talk, con talking to the company that is working with the village. We also, several months ago, had asked Dan, who's our architect here, um, if he had any thoughts about it. He actually swung by last week, took some pictures, and he's going to be making some suggestions as well. When he came in, he immediately said, yeah, you need something here, here, and here. So he clearly has given us some thoughts. So just wanted you to know that's in progress. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the liaison reports. Friends of the library, Carolyn. Oh, yes, we had our first meeting. It was Monday, March 14th. 14, thank you. And um, there were a few interesting things. Um, the Friends of the Library, uh, what I'm understanding, visit Illinois libraries, and um, I think they visit them just to learn about libraries. But um, this, at this particular meeting, um, Chris Hanusiak, the president, um, asked Cindy if um, she would like to recommend libraries in the area or wherever that have either um, programming or displays, anything that she would like our library to have. And it would be worthwhile for us then to visit those libraries. So Cindy um, agreed to look into that and get back to us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and then let's see what else. There were three things. Um, oh, yes. The friends are also trying to find out what particular award the Skokie Library had won. Um, we weren't sure if it's ALA or what it is, but and then they wanted to know what the parameters were to see if Niles Library could somehow get involved in that process as well. Another thing that we threw Cindy's way, and then there was one last thing. Oh yes, they're going to donate three hundred dollars worth of Tootsie Roll banks for your Sweet Home Chicago exhibit. Um, I think I'm supposed to label or something for them, so I think we may get them in a week or so. Okay. And Cindy was going to figure out what to do with that. I hope they're helpful. I mean, I was going to just my suggestion was. Should we ask them what they need? And then they just threw in these to a bank. So that's kind of where it went. And um, that's about all. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Thank oh, you. Welcome. All right, uh, legislative. And rails. Um, rails, there's a membership meeting next week where they are uh, they, they are giving the results of a study that they have been working on uh, for membership requirements to rails. I'll be very interested to hear what those are, and we'll report back. Susan, are you on the uh, uh, sister city? 
No, I am not. I'm on the Arts and Culture Library Council. Okay, next secretary's report. There is there isn't any. And the next is new business. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve item A, which is recommended changes to the library's dental plan to include family members' charges as eligible for reimbursement beginning on July 1st, 2016. Um, I'll make a motion assuming we're going to discuss it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Karen? And I'll second it. And Carolyn. Thank you. Okay. So you could tell us about it, Susan, so yeah. then we can have a discussion. Yeah, I'll give the broad outline and then yeah. the details, it will be great. But um, the, basically, the library right now offers each of its full time employees $1,000 of money to pay any dental bills over the year. And what it, some of the staff have requested to go to a, a more dental insurance plan where family members could be added, but when Greg did a study on that, he found that. Um, over half of the dentists would not ha actually have been covered in the dental insurance. And people really like their dentists. They're attached to it. So um, they had suggested possibly what thing might work is to keep our $1,000 cap, but allow them to put in not just for themselves, but mm -hmm. also for family members. So the cap remains the same. It's still $1,000. It's not adding anything that way. <coughs> they just would submit their children's dental bills and their spouse's dental bills. So that's what we are proposing. Anything I missed? This is full-time employees. Full-time employees. Full -time. Mm -hmm. So the, the only change would be just allowing them to also get reimbursement for their kids? Yep. Is it for the dependent? Yep. Um, is this one of those plans where people can pay for their dental care with pre tax dollars? No. The, they pay, it's a reimbursement plan? Uh -huh. I mean, it goes there too, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they probably could after the thousand. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, a lot of employers have those plans where you get a certain amount taken out of your paycheck or your section paid by the district, and then you seek reimbursement, and then you don't pay any taxes on that. So, like, say, for instance, someone submits to you $1,000 worth of dental bills, and you pay them $1,000. Is that thousand dollars included in their W two? I mean, is that included? No. It's not. No. Okay. Yeah. It's a benefit though from us. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's pre-tax. It would be in their gross. We just we know in the net. No, they're not contributing. No, we're. No, we're giving it's about the yeah. yeah. she's, she's talking about flex. Are you yeah, talking about flex? Flex plan. Yeah. Some employers call them flex plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, some healthcare accounts. I think some employers call them that. And yeah, typically, you, you as the employee decide, I'm going to put so much in this plan, and then as you demonstrate you've used it for health care expenses or child care or whatever, uh, then you get the money back, and it's not taxed. So I, I was wondering if it operated like that, but it doesn't sound like it does. Yeah. Um, we do have that. That we, is available, but it's not We have not that in dental. addition to Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, that makes sense to have that. Too, because if say they realize they've got a kid coming up with serious dental work. So let's say two thousand dollars worth of expenses in a year a year. First thing I suppose you'd want to do is if you're an employee, you know, say, okay, here's a thousand dollars, I want that thousand dollars reimbursement above and beyond my salary. And then you take the second thousand and go to your health care account and get reimbursed from that, right? I suppose. I just don't but that, that doesn't involve us at all. We just have the thousand dollars, and most well, people don't come to the thousand dollars. They just get their teeth cleaned a couple times a year. And we need to review this and figure out how we should be handling it. Actually, um, if are you? Are, I just want to throw one thing in. If you're done, um, um, you I would I would like to um, table a actually and um, table it for our budget preparation discussions. Um, because I think employee benefits is something we should be looking at for uh, the 2016-17 budget year and it would give us more time to figure out what we actually provide our employees and what's the best way to do this as well because there are new members on the board who really aren't familiar with our benefits packages either and it would be something we should look at totally and since we're planning our budget preparation I'd like to 
table this until that time when we can review it more thoroughly. I, I don't, can I just go I'm not sure about um, tabling it, and I'll just give my point of view because it's not increasing it and it's not adding to any budget, it's just kind of dispersing it in a different way. So it's not changing the budget in any way, it's just changing the way we would possibly pay it out, and that's the discussion that's on the table. Well, I think we're not prepared to actually make that decision, but I also would like the board members to be able to see what we provide our employees, and maybe based on what we do, maybe they can come up with ideas to either add this to something, or I think they should have a complete package of what we do. We're sort of doing this piecemeal, one thing here, one thing there. Remember, we tried to get away from that. We tried to give everybody all the information, review it, and then move on. I'm not saying we won't do this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, why should we need to even try and investigate this right now? And we're not prepared to do that, and we're ready to jump into budget preparations anyway. Susan, was there some reason why this came up now in that part of the budget process? Uh, just that I had heard from a couple different employees that they were really, you know, that they were, they knew people that had dental insurance and they wondered why we didn't oh, okay. have dental insurance. So there's no, there's no dire need from anybody in particular that... Well, I think, right. I think people in particular that have family members that are going through dental expenses I, would I, see I it as pressing, but, but, yeah. You know, if we, if we table this for our overall budget, benefit discussion. It's up to you. We'd start to make the And it would still not infringe on the beginning being July 1st. Well, that's right, our true. goal. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, right. yeah, that's true. Yeah. That was when it was due to start in any case. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, at least we can tell them we tried. Huh. Well, it's still. Well, it's not a no. It's not a no. It's time to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we should probably yeah. have a formal, if we're yeah. not a table, we should probably have a formal motion. Okay. Just, I don't choose whatever you well, want to Well, I, I guess I should go around and ask everyone else what I mean, should go on. Patty, what do you think about the dental? Would you rather talk about it in the whole budget piece? To be honest with you, I really don't know. I mean, if, if people feel it should be in the budget meeting, then fine. Otherwise, I would, you know, I have no problem voting on it now. Either way. Uh, I'm just wondering if this whole scheme is legal, actually. Uh, it yes, seems to be, you know, she's right. Um, you know, for an extra thousand dollars, that should be included in their gross income for the year. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, this, just giving employees an extra thousand dollars without having to pay taxes on it, when it's not within the health care fund system, which is separate and apart, that's fine, that's, you know, a recognized uh, scheme. I, I, I just a little concerned about this in general. So you're okay. So just so I'm wrapping my head around this. So you're saying because it's <coughs> a dental plan. Well, it's not really. Okay. It's not a dental. It's not a. It's not dental insurance. Well, it is. It's well, it's, it's a formalized dental plan and it's a reimbursement. Uh, it is a reimbursement plan. So uh, you know we do have a formal plan document and everything, as opposed to just you know a couple of notes that we file in order to make it work. It, or is it a dental plan and you just happen to hold it? Because I know that's how our district run it's we it's they pay us it's a it's self insured. It's a self insured dental plan, that's what I have. You know, there, there are plans that if the village has a, a, a health plan where they give you three hundred dollars for um, medical just to just to go for a, a, a physical. And it's it's kinda of almost the same thing. You go for a physical and, and you put the receipt in, they'll get it for money. So it's really mm -hmm. very important with that kind of a process. I don't know if you've experienced those kinds of things in other places, but I have seen that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's not your gross income, you know? No, it's not. It's just mm -hmm. they just give you money. But it's based on a receipt, though. You know, it's yeah. not just giving you money. So I, there, there are plans like this do exist. Or it might be like a based on a re reimbursement, but it's part of the. Plan, like a written it's plan. a written plan, right? It's, it's not like an over above all of our full right. time employees right. have a. But I mean, maybe that is. They maybe that's a good way to have a discussion. Have it all. Maybe bring the document, figure out what it is, sure. so that everyone mm -hmm. understands it and is yeah. comfortable with it. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the July first is so it's fine. Still that's right. when we're going to be talking about. Right. You know, okay. um, yeah. I typed our. I typed up a motion. If you want. 
we want. Oh, we're not done. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I guess we should go around and just do. Uh, yeah, I, if we want to table it. Well, you need a motion, and you need a second. To table it. Okay. So, um, so to table a motion to. Uh, or move to table this recommendation to change the library dental plan. Yeah, I have it typed up. Do you want me to? I have a motion to table the recommended changes to the library's dental plan and review this along with other expenses during our 2016-17 budget process to be finalized for July 1st. Okay, well, what if we end up being August 1st? No, meaning <laughs> this will be in <laughs> oh, this will be July okay. 1st. All right. Okay, um, all right, this sounds fine with me. Because we did plan, did we? Right, but I just sure. want to make sure. Oh. Yeah, a date in there. Just nervous. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, because I think we should have it finalized for July first. Yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you want me to do this to write uh, down? Motion. So, um, do I have a motion? A motion. Okay. So, we need a second. I second the motion. Okay, Tim. So, Carolyn made the motion. And that's the language of the motion. Yeah. So I should. Take can that. I? And I'll give it to you after. We have, I have a couple other things on here that you can. Yeah. Okay. Motion to table. Motion to table. Right. Okay. Karen. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Agenda item for a motion to approve the 2010 Best Buy PTA settlement offer recommended by client books. Motion. Second. 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 So when did Best Buy go out of business? Is this the last one we're going to get from Best Buy? This is the couple of years at least. I've seen that building empty. Oh. Yeah, this was from 2010, right? Uh huh. Yes. Or no? Yes. Okay. For the 2010 to 2012. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So essentially what we're saying here is that $3,700 is a lot cheaper than having to go to trial for it. Correct. Mm -hmm. I have a question um, about the process, how these surface. Uh, I'm a little concerned. I think last month we just received the first PTAB um, request, and now a month later we have two more. So do these just trickle out? Or is there some way to be more proactive and find out who in fact filed these and what we're really in for? Well, Best Buy filed it. No, what I'd like to know, did we, did we know a year ago Best Buy filed this? Are we aware of how many people have filed? Yeah, we get notices. We get notices uh, on a monthly basis of people who are making these types of um, uh, petitions to the court. Okay, so my question is, this was filed back in 2010, right? So why are we finding out now? At, at that point, when we received notice, somebody decided to engage Pine Corp and Jenkins mm -hmm. to uh, uh, represent us uh, and, and defend uh, along with the oh, no, uh, I'm school familiar. districts. I'm familiar with that. We knew a long time ago they were representing us. My question is why three years later, February one person is expecting us, they're, they're contesting the assessment we have to pay them. This month in March, two more companies are contesting. So are we gonna just go through this month after month and people are going to pop up? Or, as our attorneys, can you not find out who actually filed these yeah, this assessments? Is this is a settlement. This is a I know, but what I'm saying is how many more settlements are out there that we're going to be involved in. Lots probably, definitely. I mean, people every well, year, every, every year, people like come it. in and file yeah. these appeals. I don't year. recall. There are, there, are, there are hundreds, maybe thousands, Carolyn, okay. uh, that are out there. Uh, during 2010, there were uh, a couple of pretty large ones, like Coca-Cola, Best Buy, uh, the one that our target, the one following it. I'm sure that there's uh, a few more. We still have gotten a list from Mallory of everything. Well, when did we get that list? So we, we still have gotten a list from Mallory. Uh, well, there's only a couple more at best. Yeah, that's what that's, a, that's what she had indicated, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. What's well, on. here's my question: how, how do we know for certain? Because it seems like we're never positive about what's happening to the library. So, what and I understand you? just just because I know you're very detailed. I understand the process. My concern is these were filed years ago. Don't we know in advance who filed them and assume eventually they're going to hit us? We could have known this last year before we budgeted. I mean, this is on the horizon. And I just feel like now, two months in a row, last month it was one company, this month it's two. I mean, this doesn't give us a leg to stand on to really be better at, at what our expenses are. So, uh, so every day, every, every month we get notices from companies and individuals that are protesting their uh, mm -hmm. assessed valuations. The reason that you're seeing these is that these were chosen, they were large enough, that we that we chose them to be defended by Clyde Thorpe and Jenkins, along with the school districts, you know, high school and elementary school, the village, and whomever else wanted to uh, join that suit. Or, I don't know if I'm using correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, what you don't see are all the ones that we haven't given to Klein Court and Jenkins that happen as an ongoing normal course of business in the county. It just so happens in 2010, as everybody was uh, uh, experiencing lower market values on their properties, mm -hmm. they said, hey, why am I still paying property taxes at a market value up here when I should be paying down here? And then that, remember? They change the percentages. When the real estate properties drop substantially, the state changed the, the, the factors on real estate taxes. That tends to lift the okay. actual market. Okay, okay. So, you know, so there, there were a rash of them, probably in, 2010, when the tri triennial assessment came out, because of the lag, they probably saw their assessed valuations actually increase, uh, and now they've subsequently decreased. And these 
you know, these petitions were filed to argue against the increase during the time when their actual value, the market value, had decreased. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, periodically, I get from the uh, from the county a notice that there's been an adjustment due to a refund in 2011 or 2012 or 2014 or whatever. Um, you don't see those because it's the ongoing normal course of business that we have with the company. So you're saying that decreases our revenues because of this, of those yeah, notices if, you get. So if you, as a, as a property holder and a taxpayer in this district, get a, uh, get a refund because you've been successful in making a petition, then we get a few bucks less mm -hmm. on the next distribution of taxes. So my question is, how much is how much money are you talking about compared to these, the ones you decided to have him represent? So are we talking pennies? It varies. It, uh, it's, all, it's all over the map. I will tell you, though, that every year uh, we look at the amount of taxes that we actually collect against the amount of the levy mm -hmm. that was act the final levy that was actually extended. Mm -hmm. And we've consistently been like in the ninety five to ninety seven percent range. Okay, so three percent of six million dollars is that's a lot of money. So when we submit the tax levy one of the things that the county does mm -hmm. is it takes all of those line items and inflates it by 3% to account for loss. Okay. 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 So it's really nothing to get alarmed about. Uh, these are large numbers and they'll be, you know, they'll be paid. I think, you know, we, uh, by and large, we should be fine. Okay, uh, it's, as, it's good. As we have in previous years. But again, it's, it's, it's under control then, it's, it's something that happens, but I still feel if we're paying a law firm to represent us, at least we could do is know what's on the horizon. Well, I, first of all, all of this predates, I think, everybody sitting around the table. It doesn't matter. We should have the second, information at the Second thing room. is that we've requested a list of these things that they're handling currently. The third thing is, is that they get on, on a regular, ongoing basis and you never see the workings at, at this time. Yeah, it's fine. But again, we are retaining an, an attorney. So and we we'll keep getting surprised. I, I would just like you to know up front what's going on. So uh, we, at some point we can have a list of the ones that are with the law firm. She mentioned yeah. it last week when she called about this and yeah. said that she was planning on sending it. So okay. uh, she's, she's been out of town, so I'll check yeah. through Tomorrow. Then I guess it should be in tomorrow. Do we want to have the yeah, board meeting if you add any more to them to make a note that, that these items were added to this? Well, uh, as no more than three additional ones. I think it's more like one or two. Uh, yeah. I guess. So it's, it's not like a big list. It's it's one or two. Large companies. Because we usually don't yeah. handle one. Right. Sure. We, don't, we haven't gotten one from the district yet. We haven't Quite a while. Oh, okay. as a practical matter, um, we are such a small part of the tax levy, you know, that in, these taxpayers are paying, that it makes more sense from my perspective to tag along with what the, oh, uh, sure. what the school districts are, are spending on this. Mm -hmm. sure. Because whatever happens to the assessed valuation uh, based on their, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, we'll trickle, <laughs> trickle down no, the list. Totally yeah. in agreement with that. I guess I'm, I'm yeah. trying to address Carolyn's concern that maybe if we get that list and then any new ones that are sent to them, yeah, that are more meaning to say, you know, that would be obviously not fine. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that, that you receive what like was going on. And I just have a question because the last time we were kind of under, you know, the rest of kind of right. got that paid. So this time we got it March 10th. And now, when is it due? Well, when I got it last. It? I actually got it last Friday. That's why it was late on the agenda. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, and then when does it show that we? Is it like a pay upon request? I mean, no. It's just <coughs> a, it's just okay. Oh. Okay. Right. 
Okay, so this one we are actually be able to. Okay. Uh, I can talk about and discuss. All right. Just one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, as I recall, and maybe I'm saying that I saw. Um, Sometimes, though, our board gave a directive to the time for the that if we had more than a certain number of dollars at risk, we would authorize an intervention in a PTAB appeal. Is that your recollection? Yeah, yeah, it's generally what we do is when we get notices from the district, we'll do an evaluation as to what you have at risk. And if the dollars are significant enough, then we would recommend against intervening because you're going to spend more money trying to fight it than it's worth. I thought yeah, you said like a certain dollar. I, I can't remember what it is on here. I can only tell you we haven't gotten probably years. What in your effect? Just what generally, what, 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 what did you figure? What would that dollar be? Like 20 grand, 50 grand? I think it's about 10. I don't do the PTAB work, but my, I think it's about 10. I, I want to say like 15. It's right, it's right there. Something yeah. like that is, was at stake. It was like the amount that was being requested by the taxpayer. Not that we settle at that amount, but that sure. would be a refund the, the potential, the right. oh. the so potential impact is a certain amount. If, right. if the requester wins everything at the hearing. Sure. Okay. So it's the settled amount that you're talking about, not the refund. This is a settlement proposal. That is, is the number you use to gauge when we should decide not to when, when, the, when, the, no, when, the, when the requester comes in and says we're, we're contesting our taxes, okay, they, there's a calculation that's made that if they win everything that they're contesting, the worst case scenario is X amount. Mm -hmm. If that X amount exceeds $10,000 or maybe fifteen, I don't know what the threshold is, but whatever that number is, then we recommend, okay, it's worth fighting about. Okay. If it's below that number, we would recommend that intervening because right. you know it's appraisal costs. Okay, there's there's costs associated with litigation. Sure. Do we have that documentation in the library somewhere? Should we get that from them as well? Never seen it. So can we have that as well for their file? What? Whatever this agreement is we have with you in terms of what the threshold is. I don't know that it's represented the threshold, but it's the practice, but we certainly will let you know what that number well, is. Well, if you could put it in writing, yeah, it would absolutely. help them to know, too. Thank absolutely. You. In fact, I think we have it, so I'll double check it. Well, that's right. Just we have them and send it. That'd be awesome. Um, at least they have it. So when you're talking about notices that come into the library challenging taxes, there's, there's two there's two types of notices. One goes to the library, and there's, like Greg said, there's hundreds of them. I'm not sure you want that list. Or are you looking for the list that they send those to us, and, we, and we say it's worth intervening at? Those. Okay. That, here, that they send to you to represent us. Yeah. And then also, whatever this agreement is that... Yeah, what the threshold is. Okay, well, I'm sure there's some kind of agreement. There's like, they don't have any documentation to even justify what the process is. So you yeah, they, just, they have, have to because you have to pass a resolution authorizing us to intervene. So I'm just have. asking because, you know, we're all new and whatever. If you could just have that forwarded to sure. Greg again, that would be great. If you could put it in the minute so we can keep a, you know, a record of the fact that we've asked and where are we. I'd like to figure out where I am in the future. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so Cindy, please take a roll. So is this, which one are we talking about? This Just uh, the best buy. The best buy. Okay. okay. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Gaddy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, the next agenda item is the second settlement offer. I will hear a motion to approve the 2010 Target PTF settlement offer recommended by Klein, Thorpe, and Jenkins. So motion. Motion. Karen? Second. Okay. And any discussion on this one? Can I make a suggestion that a motion include the amount we're paying them? Like we, the last motion was to pay Best Buy. We well, say what we're paying them. Okay, but we're not actually writing a check out to them, or, you know, it's going to be with help in the future. Right? I know, but what so. I'm saying, so we know what the amount is. So the settlement is. amount. The settlement, settlement amount. The settlement yeah. and the amount of, well, that, 
The first one was 3723 and 90. Okay. And the second one is 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Topic for this month is an update from Greg on the return on family search. Greg? Okay, so um, I just did a, a brief update so that uh, we can catch everybody up and level set. We didn't have any new information to present this uh, this month. So uh, the first slide here is um, uh, just some data that's uh, that we've collected for uh, contribution rates uh, for the uh, FY16 uh, fiscal year. The three bars on the left show uh, Niles, Lincolnwood, and Schomburg. Those are the three uh, non-IMRF libraries uh, that we have. Uh, for comparison, you can see that Niles is the lowest um, in terms of the uh, library's uh, contribution rate there. Uh, the group of bars uh, to the right of that, starting at 10% and going up to 13.4%, are all of the IMRF libraries that are uh, in the area that are comparable to us, uh, and it shows what their contribution rate is. This is exclusive of the 4.5% that the um, uh, each employee puts in out of their pay. Okay. I'm sorry, can you go back to that slide? So, so those IMRF figures would include not only those libraries, IMRF contribution, but possibly matching 403B contributions? No, yeah. this is pure IMRF. Okay. okay. And, and, you know, and the, uh, if you remember, uh, you know, the, there's a couple of issues here. One is, is that in all comparable libraries, we are uh, the lowest at 7.5%, and uh, that the um, uh, low retirement uh, uh, rate contribution and the fact that we're not an IMRF library contributes to issues surrounding uh, the retention and the acquisition of talent. And we have had some uh, talent leave the library in the last, uh, in the last year or so. Why are they different amounts for the libraries? I thought IMRF was a fixed amount for all organizations. What IMRF does is uh, every year it looks at, it looks at the uh, uh, demographics of the group, including uh, birth date, likely retirement date, likely uh, mortality date, uh, how many years uh, to vest, how many years in the past, and all, all of that type of data. And they try to assess uh, how much it is it's going to cost uh, based on a number of assumptions. Okay, so uh, for example, um, uh, you can do some things to modify your rate, like Lake Villa did. Lake Villa had a higher rate, and at the end of a year, or maybe a couple of years, they took their surplus from their general fund and just wrote a check to IMRF. And that lowered their ongoing contribution rate because, um, you know, Tim, a dollar now is worth much more than <coughs> a dollar five years, ten years in the future, sure. just uh, based on the time value of the yes. So it had a direct impact on, uh, on their contribution rate, which otherwise would be higher. Okay. Yes? Can I ask, how, how did uh, the towns at the bottom get selected for comparison purposes? How, why those towns? Why those library districts? They um, are all part of an email group that was sharing information. They're all libraries that used to be part of, in what used to be the North Suburban Library System. So they, they were mean, sharing information with each other. Why, uh, they did not, they they did not answer the request. Oh. Okay. Can I ask one question? Do we know if any of those percentages may be higher because they're trying to recoup whatever they're not? 
but they maybe haven't been able to collect them in the past. Remember, there are different reasons why, well, maybe not libraries, but people who, companies who have IMRF, when um, there were issues with um, the, the contributions they were getting and because of the property values and all these issues, they weren't able to fund IMRF. So now people are paying more because they need to make it up. Do you see that here? Or is this just based so on the way I, the way IMRF works mm -hmm. is that when they establish a rate, 11%, mm -hmm. 10%, whatever it happens to be, that's what you have to pay. Otherwise, you can't be an IMRF. But it can go up based on the fact that if they need more money, there's reasons why you start off with a rate, but then because of, it has to do with uh, a decrease in funding, and then they expect the employer to pick up the difference. So there's some issues out there. I, there may I don't be, have the information in front of me. There may be market losses mm -hmm. that the portfolio experiences, in which case they start to uh, build that into the rate because they want the funding to be at a certain level. Uh, but they don't go for all of the funding losses of a particular year in the following year. They amortize it over a number of years. And that so. increases at what rate? Do we know? Is there a formula for that? Will they not hit us for more than 2%? Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's an actuarial formula, which oh, okay. is ex you know, many slides, not just this one. <laughs> so here are the types of uh, retirement plans that are available for small governmental agencies. The source for this is the uh, uh, Internal Revenue Service uh, website. They, you know, um, any organization can create a private pension plan. Uh, of course, the Illinois Municipal Retirement Plan is available to us. And then there's uh, five uh, defined contribution plans, 401A, 403B, 450, it's a real alphabet soup, 457B, 401K, and 415M. I went we went through and looked at all of the pension plans, so let's uh, and retirement plans. So let's take a look at some of the ones that don't fit. Private pension plans, um, you know, those typically lack the controls and stipulations that are, let's say, built into an IMRF type plan uh, to prevent the funding level from getting low. Uh, usually when the funding level gets low, then it causes panic. And we've seen some of that across the street at the fire and uh, police pensions that are funded at about a 43%, 44% level. So, um, you know, and, and with this type of plan, the sponsoring organization could modify the benefit levels. So if benefit levels increase, your liability increases. Typically, benefit levels don't go down. Um, or if the uh, organization deposits amounts which are below the recommend, recommended uh, levels. So what we saw across the street at the village is that for a number of years, when they were faced with uh, uh, contributions of in excess of a million dollars, they contributed around $100,000 or $200,000. That was in our previous presentation that I did mm -hmm. uh, for, this, uh, for this body. Okay, so if we look at 403B plans, um, we show what we, what we found is that these are tax sheltered annuities but by definition, they exclude government, governmental agencies which are not public schools or certain governmental health organizations. So this isn't an option for us. Uh, 401k plans, um, this, this was mentioned only because if a uh, governmental agency had a 401k plan which was established prior to May 6, 1986, uh, they were allowed to be grandfathered in. Uh, we have no such plans. And then the 415M plans, are used to shelter benefits in excess of the Section 415 limits. The Section 415 limits determine how much you can actually put into a plan and how much you can defer. So the current limit for those elective deferrals is 18,000, and then it's 53,000 overall. Um, we don't we don't have an issue uh, with with this at all. Uh, so it's it's not something that we need to consider. So the remaining candidates uh, to investigate are IMRF and then, as you see, 401A and, and 457B, which we already have. 
If we look at the Illinois Municipal Retirement Plan, uh, some of the features, uh, pays a defined benefit, it's basically the definition of a defined benefit plan, and it's based on salary and years of service at retirement. But it will cover full and part-time employees who work more than 1,000 hours each year. Uh, once joined, you can't terminate. Employees are fully vested in eight or 10 years. Uh, it used to be eight years for everyone, and then they introduced the second tier of employees, um, and the vesting is 10 years on, that, uh, on the second tier. Uh, this was probably done to provide some relief during the uh, financial crisis. Um, Funding consists of 4.5% from the employees and then an additional funding from the library of somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 14%, depending on cost study. Uh, employees at the start will be credited with 20 years of prior service automatically up to five years total. Sorry? 20, you said 20 years. I think you I said 20%. 20%. Excuse me. Oh, okay. I thought it was um, a mistake. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then employees can purchase additional prior service years. Uh, library must pay its share on a timely basis, uh, as determined by the IMRF. Employee data submitted uh, was submitted in January with a processing fee of uh, $1,402, and we're expecting cost numbers by the end of this month. Uh, one last thing. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what's that? What, what's that? Uh, well, we submitted all of our employee data to the, uh, oh, to they, the plan, they charge you and they charge you $1,402. Yeah. Not 1400 or 1450, 1402. Just one question. That was directly to IMRF? Yes. Oh, okay. I read the article in the paper and I was wondering, who did he go to? He didn't go to IMRF. I didn't, it wasn't clear to me who he went to. Okay, so that's fine. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And then last uh, but not least, it includes life insurance, disability insurance, and an additional savings program uh, for employees. So are you saying at no additional cost, employees get life insurance and disability insurance? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, well, you know, you can argue whether or not it's additional costs or not. It's rolled into the 10 to 14 percent. Yeah, what you already told us. Okay. Right. The uh, second plan is a defined contribution plan. Uh, it's a Section 401A uh, plan. Um, as I said, it's a defined contribution, uh, which by definition means that you put in a fixed amount of money that's defined as opposed to pulling out a benefit. Uh, it requires mandatory contributions from eligible employees defined by the organization. Uh, it typically includes a matching, a, a match from the sponsoring organization, which is also determined by the organization. Uh, it can include a vesting schedule or not. Uh, and then that's also defined as one of the uh, plan features by the organization. Uh, employees will determine the investment allocation of the funds that are in the plan, much like any other 401, just like the 457 that we have now, you, just, you determine how much to go into mm -hmm. equity and how much to go into uh, fixed income and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the retirement benefit is dependent on the amount saved plus earnings uh, returned over the life of participation. So, where uh, in the defined the benefit plan, it's, it's based on a, a formula where it's salary and number of years of service, it's, uh, it's a little different here. It's all based on what, what you've actually put into the plan. Uh, the library must pay its share on a timely basis. Uh, deferrals are tax referred, uh, deferred, and the deferrals are not ever subject to FICA tax. Uh, we cannot make additional deferrals, but we can make after-tax contributions into this plan. And then the last one is the 457 plan, uh, which we currently have. It uh, is a defined contribution plan as well. It's a voluntary contribution from eligible employees defined by the organization. Uh, may include a match from the sponsoring organization. Again, that's, that would be determined by the organization. Currently, we do not have a, have a match, but we do have 7.5% uh, uh, going in uh, every month. Uh, it can include a vesting schedule. We don't currently have a vesting schedule. The employees determine their investment allocation, as uh, I was mentioning earlier with the 401A plan. 
And retirement benefit is dependent on the amount saved, just like the, the previous plan, the 401A plan. Um, in this case, the uh, deferrals are tax deferred, but they're subject to FICA. So, uh, you know, immediately you see about a, I, it's a five point something percent, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, and you can call it an investment gain or a value gain because it's, it's not taxed uh, by FICA. And it does include Roth accounts, which are after tax uh, uh, savings vehicles. And that's what I have, that's it. That's what we're looking at. Um, we're waiting to get information back from IMRF, at which point we'll know costs, and we'll understand you know, what the dynamics are, and, um, and then what we need to do is uh, talk about that. So we should get that information yeah. by the April meeting? Yes. That's, what, that's what I thought. So um, I understand you can have an IMRF and a 457B. Yes. Can you have IMRF and a 401A too, I presume? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but we don't have that now. I don't know. If we well, uh, we, you know, we could, but you have to think about it. Um, we have to have man then we have to have mandatory contributions going in to IMRF as well as to the 401k. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, where is the job for a 457? 457 is totally voluntary. You know, zero to eighteen thousand dollars a year, which is the uh, statutory limit. Um, can you provide that to us? Sure. Thank you. Um, when we start discussing this, how are we going to assess the employee? Well, we'll be having the employees have the opportunity to talk with the IMRF people once they have the actual numbers that they would be talking about and get the information about how it would affect them personally. And then we'll ask for their input. The last time it was done by a survey, um, and of course they're always welcome to come to public comments, but, um, but yeah, we would definitely want people to have a chance to put their two cents in. Was the survey like uh, private? So they don't have it was anonymous, yes. Okay. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right, the next agenda item is to go into executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the Niles Public Library District. We have motion. So moved. Okay, um, I was thinking about our process and I wanted to suggest that um, I think I, I, I didn't respond to the email for our date. It's in April at some point, April 28th. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what I wanted, what I thought may be easier for us in terms of reviewing our budget is if we could look at the budget in like segments, um, like the, the three, I think the three main areas that we invest in are library programs, um, second would be employee benefits, and the third would be materials purchases. And I noticed in the minutes, or in, I don't know, maybe is it in your report, Susan Mark says that the supervisors were going to review or prepare information um, they're going to have some sort of sheets or something. They've each done a departmental plan okay. that has, plan. Okay. has expenses in each of these areas. Okay. And then we will compile it into a budget for you guys. So what I, what I was hoping to do is to meet at our meeting and be able to review um, these different categories, like in 1516, and I can't even think of the name of the department, but this particular department, um, had all these programs, the total was, I don't know, 60 grand, I have no idea really what's relative. And maybe each program could be identified, what was the name of it, the number of attendees, or what were the expenses for. So there's something to review, and then when you think of next year's budget, consider if you're going to continue that, or eliminate it or something. 
Um, but we don't have, we, we never get any documentation as a board to look at. So we kind of have no idea what you, ever, on a monthly basis, get the programs that have been held for the previous month and the attendance of those programs. And you get the amount of money that was spent on programming. You just don't have each thing tied to each particular program. That would be a huge amount of detail well, for the board looking at. There's usually um, like a worksheet that's provided for budget pre preparation. And there's certain information I would like us to have available. And I guess what I'm trying to do now is bring this up. I would like to sit and talk with Greg and maybe Tim about some of the information I have, some of the ideas I have, and see what we could do. Because we don't get details. And we just run through 100,000 items in one meeting. And I think if we broke it down, if at, one, if at a certain meeting we can talk about employee benefits, salaries, benefits, what they are, and the newer members could find out really what that breakdown consists of. I mean, it just gives us a better idea. And then we could talk about changing or whatever. Like there was one thing on today's agenda, which isn't um, a factor in terms of an increase. But um, I think it's information we should have when we discuss our budget. And maybe these, maybe the way I'm explaining it sounds totally complicated, but I think at least in your um, preparation for your programs, you should have a specific idea of what transpired. I mean, and it should include your purchases. I mean, it should be ongoing. It should be automatic. Well, we, but we do have that. We just don't pass all of that information mm -hmm. to the board, and we don't do it for every program. Cindy is actually, these days, the program coordinator for all programming library-wide, and she has a lot of information. But, so we're constantly making decisions about programs based on their attendance and the cost per capita. It, th these are things that we look at all of the time. So and is there an active information? If I can just kind of interject here. I don't know if that's what we're looking at all the time when we're doing the budget. I mean, we're kind of setting the numbers and then they're figuring out how they want to spend that money. So I don't know, I mean, from my point of view, I don't think that's information that when we're going to be going line by line, we're going to have a budget meeting going line by line with the budget numbers as what was asked. But I don't think we need all this detailed information when we're setting the budget and then they decide what they're going to actually be spending it on. Well, I don't think that that is, I mean, we've had every single, all the information all the way up to this, but I don't know, anybody else can have a discussion on this. We've never like, received any information. We have a in our in our packet every month. No, we have we have we have, we have attendance. And no, we have we have the whole part in there about attendance and okay. the actual programming okay, and I'm, the dollar amount. That's completely different than a budget worksheet. Okay, I'm saying there must be some way that we can recap this information. Is your record or whatever you do? Do you have spreadsheets or database where you put all this in so you can identify your programs and what well, they I'm consist of? Gathering it all. Yeah, I'm gathering the information um, and uh, you know comparing it to the budget numbers that come out every month and by department. You know, um, and then meeting with the programmers and you know talking about where we are with the budget and what we want to do in the future and. You know, I think what they're looking for is, um, and what would help me, is to know, like, two, three years out, is there like a big direction the board wants to go? Is there a big uh, well, idea you have out there, rather, you know, which sort of helps guide, you know, the direction that we're going in. Before we can have a future vision, I think we have to have an idea of what our programs cost now. <clears throat> and we don't have that. Could you, for example, what did we just we have? Do. Sweet Chicago. Yeah, but we do have that. We do? So do you have Yeah, and it's, it's in the check. It's, so it shows do. everything that was purchased for that event. Because I know you've had events that, I, I don't see any report on a particular program that includes the purchasing or maybe the yeah, employee hours. Do we want to go through every single expense that we're... I mean, we have it in the check register, yeah. everything that goes Oh, no, that's not at all the same. Well, that's, see, that's okay. that. I do consider it all of that. I, I'm trying to yeah. persuade yeah. you that. No, I, I am a little. I, I guess it, it, maybe I'm, I'm trying to figure that. So, like, it, like, let's say we were going over programming mm -hmm. support adult. Mm -hmm. are, are you saying that you have, and, and right now we know that we've spent $17,000? Well, for example, for the month, we spent $5,317 right. on programming and 
Okay, so they have to depart. Well, yeah. So it's it's a line line no, it's a line mm -hmm. item. Right. It's not a specific department. It's adult programming across all the departments. Correct. So are you saying that Which in order includes? for you, yeah, you, in order for you to make a decision if that amount of money should be adequate or increased or decreased, that you would need to see what all those programs were? For well, the for years? example, we just had that sweet home yeah, Chicago, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, what did it cost to put that program? <clears throat> the, are you talking uh, about the exhibit? The whole thing, you know, the food, the, you know, the staffing, whatever you needed to create for it. I mean, there's a total cost involved. Right. So what did that cost us? I don't, I don't have that. But the only thing is, as long as they're within their budget, it's but here's the part. We can't stay within our budget if we can't figure out what we spend on something. How do we figure out what we're going to do next year? If this was a profitable event, and I don't mean... We're not a we profit organization. No. Successful, I think. Successful. <laughs> I mean, you have to have parameters. You can't just say we spent $6 million this year and next year we'll spend seven. So what do you suggest we do to get some clarification? Right, but if you're asking, okay, then do we continue that again, then you, they might not do that one if it maybe didn't have a lot of attendees, but then they'll have something else in place that, and then come back to the table and say, okay, this didn't work out that great, which, but we, let's do this instead. So then, right but on. actually, it did work out great. We're already having 400. Maybe we do want a three-month display like this in Chicago, maybe a Chicago store call. Okay. So, but it's all based on... Experience, but what was the cost to have this program, that program, or another program? Is that was it successful? Did we spend more on something than we needed to? Should we revamp it? And in but terms of they, your budget, that's what, what they should do? evaluate. But that's what they should evaluate, and that's so what that we're paying what we them to evaluate. So I think this still evaluate. should be in the budget discussions, which we're going to have a line up budget meeting, and I don't know if there's anything else we can say for that. Well, yeah, I think, I, and I agree with you, but I think Carolyn was trying to say, okay. in preparation for that meeting, mm -hmm. you know, what, and I'm grappling with this too, mm -hmm. but how do we assess a particular line item, how do we assess it? If, if okay, so let's talk about the programming adult support, just, just for an example, we've got $29,000 budgeted, so we have our budget workshop and we say, okay, you guys want to spend thirty thousand, or you want to spend twenty eight thousand? What is our? How do we assess? We, we would be giving you general categories of the types of programming that would be coming out of it, um, and then it would be up to the staff to implement those programs. And then we are gauging all the time whether those programs are successful or not, and and tweaking as we go along all the time. That's very much a part of the job that we do. Um, in terms of what you see, what you could gauge is what's the attendance? You know, what's our overall program attendance? Are we, are we, uh, if we give more money in adult programming, are we getting more people coming through the door? How is it affecting statistics? Those are the statistics that you have. I don't think it would be productive for the board to be looking at every program that we have and doing a per capita cost analysis. No, that's true, but according to you and Cindy, there you don't have that information. I don't, I don't have, have that. I don't have it right here, right now. Oh no, no. But I'm saying you should have does a process. Of that is that. She, that's very much what she's doing. She's collecting all of that information about all kinds of programs. Not okay. every single one, but yeah, she's actually tackled this in a big way that I did not have time to do when I was assistant. So director somewhere last there is an explanation of each program and what it costs and so forth and so on. So when we have the budget discussion, would you like say an aggregate? Would you like a uh, something that says as if, if possible, by a line in a programming up a support. Twenty-five programs were created, or fifty were run, and we had five hundred attendants. Something See, at least a summary. It probably won't suffice, but it's fine. I understand it's it's extremely detailed. Um, one thing that came to mind: I think we had something for the Academy Awards or something. Mm -hmm. It was all over the township. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was talking about it. It was fantastic, but the people that were there. I think there's a second day that you had it. No, there were two one. days. Just one. Okay. Or just well, there were they were showing movies in preparation for it, but the actual Oscar program. Something about Niles residents come first, and yes. then okay, then there's this 
Oh, they, they, they can sign up first and then the other people can have that empty spots. That's okay. what that is. It's all one day. So, and so what I heard is there were people from Northbrook and the city and they're saying, wow, our libraries don't do any of this. And then they were talking about the food and, and everything. And, and so I'm trying to figure out how much are we actually spending for and people to come here from Chicago. And we're trying to figure that out, too. We actually okay. are looking at that. Okay. In particular it's what I meant. And then I heard people <laughs> taking soda home. I'm like, what do they think we are? Like, you know, Grand Central. Mm. Just, I'm just saying is somebody, you know, because I don't see that based on, you know, financial reports. So that's why I brought that up. But that's fine. Again, I get your sign. Um, but then as far as employee benefits go, I mean, I don't even think our, our, um, our new members realize what benefits we offer, what portion the library pays for, just to give them an idea. And then where are we headed? We, we need to do something with retirement and I don't know what else. But that was something else I thought that we could discuss. But what we seem to do is just go line by line. Oh, wait, so here's the bigger picture. So according to Greg's presentation when we were talking about increasing the levy, you know, we're going to run out of money because, I don't know, what is it, 2.7% or I don't know, some figure, every year we have an increase. But are we going to stay within that? Are we going to make sure whatever dollar amount we come up with on a program, that all the programs that are involved in that, they get a specific amount, they don't go over, so that's how we stay under budget? I mean, is this all determined before you give us the figure? Well, what I can say is that I don't plan to give the board a budget that has room in it to cut. I plan to give the board a budget that I think will satisfy the needs of the community based on what we have observed for, through our data through the past few years. Okay. And I, I just want to say that we reassess these things all the time. It's, okay. We have a senior management meeting once a week. We look at these things ourselves. Some of the questions you're asking are questions we're asking, too. Oh, that's fine. We're, I'm just, I'm on the outside looking in. Okay, that sounds great. Well, I mean, part of the job of the board is to develop the vision of where you mm -hmm. want the programming to go and what, and some of that will be part of the strategic planning. I, I hear you talk a lot about your job being the budget, but your job is also developing, the, you know, the, what you think this library should be. That is part right. of your role as, as board members. But then I need you to say to me, well, you know, this type of program is phenomenal. Yeah. It, you know, instead of looking at a line item for programming in adults for I don't know how much, yeah. it doesn't tell me, so now where are, we, where are we going in the future? So maybe a little more detailed, maybe not necessarily a worksheet with more budget figures, but where do we want to go in the future? Do we want to increase programming? What type of programming? Well, and this year we did, had already agreed that uh, we're, I'm going to be writing you a narrative that goes with the budget so that you do have more background information because I do feel like every year you just get this line, this mm -hmm. set of lines, and it's Thanks. not enough information. So that's why I had them all develop department plans, and I'm, I'm going to okay. 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 pull okay. that together well, into a much more I'm, explanation. Okay. What I'm getting out of what you're saying is <clears throat> even if you have a list of, okay, these are the programs that were run. These were extremely successful. These were key. Eh. Then you can, you know, is that what you're looking for? Right. Well, because okay. I wanted to make sure certain things were included. Let me just throw one more thing out there. Do you include salaries when you figure out the cost of your programs? We do a periodic audit where we ask people to keep track of the amount of time they have spent on preparing for a program. It's not something they do all the time because that actually, the, t the keeping track of that takes a lot of time. But we do periodic audits. We have not had one for a while though, so he's getting ready to do it on the month of April. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's So yeah, so we are, we are it's, staff time is more expensive than a lot of other <coughs> No, I agree, I agree. Seriously, that's yeah. understandable. Okay, and then my last thing about employee benefits. The reason I really wanted to look at that is I don't understand the makeup of the library. 44 full-time employees sounds really tiny, and we're open like 12 hours a day. So I'm trying to figure out where the full-time people are. Are they like just 8 to 5 or whatever, oh, no, 9 no, to no. 5? Well, I mean, the, 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 the business, behind-the-scenes business type people are, Kathy Toy, for example, would be 9 to 5. But no, the, the 9 to 5, like the librarians that are full-time are working evenings and weekends. It's, you've got to cover 72 hours. So that's how we get their full-time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. and it just fits up. It's 37.5 hours a week in some configuration spread out over 72 hours a week. Okay. All right, well, that's good to know. All right, well, those are all my questions. Okay. All right. <coughs> all right.
right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Um, okay. Second. She said sorry. No, that's a second. I don't care. I'm just like, okay. This is something to take a look. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. This is the one that came here. Patty? Yes. Oh, no, it didn't. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Thank you.